In this video, we're going to learn about net ionic equations in the context of single replacement reactions. Now in lab, you may have seen this already, that uh, for example, a metal like aluminum can be dipped into a solution of copper two ions, in this case, copper two nitrate. And over time, the blue copper two solution becomes a little bit less blue because the copper two ions get reduced to copper metal. And that's the sort of weird growth that seems to be forming on the surface of the aluminum. Um, so we're going to analyze this. Um, the equation is that aluminum plus um, copper two nitrate yields uh, copper metal plus uh, aluminum nitrate. But if we break this apart, we can kind of analyze it for what actually is changing here and what's a spectator ion. So breaking apart the copper two nitrate and the aluminum nitrate, we can see that the full ionic equation is the aluminum metal reacts with three copper two ions, and there are also six nitrate ions in this solution, um, that three times two would give you six. And then on the right side for products, we have three copper metal plus two aluminum plus three ions plus those same six nitrate ions. So just looking through this, the aluminum has changed because it went from solid to aqueous and neutral to plus three. The copper has changed because it was aqueous and plus two, but it became uh, solid and neutral. But what hasn't changed is the nitrate. This is a spectator ion. And so those spectator ions can be crossed out when we write the net ionic equation, which just simplifies everything, looking at only what has changed. Now, I could analyze this a little bit further by saying that our aluminum metal, which is kind of silvery in color, um, that is oxidized from the solid phase um, in neutral state uh, to plus three. And in the process, it gives up three electrons and becomes aqueous. So that's the oxidation half of this reaction. Uh, the reduction half of this reaction is uh, where there's the gain of electrons. And we have these aqueous blue colored copper plus two ions. Once they gain two electrons, then they become this sort of reddish brown copper metal that's in the solid phase. And if I wanted to, I could say that these two aluminums give you two aluminum plus threes and actually six electrons. And I could say that three copper plus twos plus six electrons give us three coppers. And actually, when I add the oxidation and the reduction half reactions, once the electrons are balanced and there's six on each side, then that adds to our net ionic equation. This is something that you'll see more of in uh, general redox chemistry and um, electrochemistry. Um, it's worth noting that uh, not every combination of an element and an aqueous ion will necessarily form, um, will give a reaction. It all depends on the activity series. Um, and I'd encourage you to go back to my chapter seven playlist for more on the activity series. Um, if you look here, basically, um, activity is very similar to reactivity in terms of um, its, its correlation. You see that at least with the nonmetals, uh, the most active nonmetal is fluorine, which is to the top right, and then chlorine, and then oxygen. Um, note that for the metals, it's not quite a perfect um, correlation. Normally, your most reactive metals are low and to the left, and lithium actually is the most active of the metals. Um, but Basically, what this means is that if I have, for example, potassium chloride and iodine and I mix them together, no reaction will occur. And that's because chlorine is more active than iodine. And so the iodine is not good enough at pulling away the electron from the chloride ion. Uh, you can say it has not as high electronegativity. It doesn't have as strong an electron affinity. And so it just can't do that to the chloride. On the other hand, if I reverse it and I have iodide negative ions and chlorine gas, the chlorine gas is a more active um, element. And so it's capable of ionizing by pulling away the electron from the I minus um, and giving us uh, chloride and iodine in the neutral phase. Just walking through this, we could uh, take our full ionic equation 
uh, you'll see that potassium ions are the same on both sides. They haven't changed in the reaction, and so they will be our spectators. It is the two I minuses uh, that are aqueous that react with the chlorine gas that is neutral, affording uh, iodine solid and the two chloride aqueous ions. Um, breaking this apart a little bit further, we can say that the iodide gets oxidized to iodine, um, which produces two electrons. Um, note that there's conservation of charge, negative two on the left, negative two on the right. Um, and then the reduction half reaction is just going to be that the chlorine gas gains those two electrons that the iodine lost, um, and it becomes two chloride anions in the aqueous state. Um, so that's all for this video. Hope it's been helpful. Feel free to leave any questions or comments in the comments section below. And thanks for watching.